It's time to take the Atlanta Hawks seriously. In a heated series against the New York Knicks, the leadership of head coach Nate McMillan, along with the record-breaking performances from Trey Young, combined with the sniping of Bogdanovich, Herter, and Gallinari around their superstar Ice Trey, this team is built for the modern NBA. We're going to look at how their series against the Knicks has been damn intense, and stay tuned to see how far Atlanta will go in this year's playoffs. Only 22% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please join us on the journey to 50K by hitting that sub box in the bottom right. Appreciate you for tuning in. Trey Young was spat on. He heard chants of you following his name at Madison Square Garden. And whether it was Westbrook getting popcorn thrown on him in Philly or Kyrie Irving, who just got a water bottle tossed on him in Boston, these kinds of things have to stop from fans. There's a point fans can get to that's both raunchy and respectful, like these overrated chants from Hawks fans, which were directed at Julius Randle. Keep coming. They've got to get a little bit more production and efficient production from this guy. One for 12 is not going to cut it. Maybe those chants were harsh, but the most improved player of the year hasn't been performing whatsoever. Through four games in this series, Randle shooting a measly 27% from the field and is averaging just 16.8 points per game. Some players raise their games in the playoffs and others fall victim to the moment, and Randall's just falling short under the pressure. The Hawks have done a good job at showing him bodies and making sure that he doesn't have much room to operate all series, and he's been largely unable to adjust. Randall struggled immensely against Atlanta's defense, and his inability to produce points is a huge part of the reason that the Knicks are down 3-1. He shot just 20 for 73 over the first four games of this series, and he certainly doesn't look like the player that won the NBA's MIP award for his play during the regular season. You don't want to be too tough on Randall, as he's obviously had a great season, the man's a solid player, but it's become pretty clear that he can't be the top offensive option on a legitimate contender. He could be a great second or third guy, but he still has a way to go before he can be a top viable option. Hopefully he bounces back for a big breakout performance in game five, because without it, the series will likely come to an end. Meanwhile, for the steaming Atlanta Hawks, they definitely were embracing their home court advantage, but they'll now have to go back to a reckless and rowdy crowd at Madison Square Garden for game five on Wednesday night. Atlanta's won 13 consecutive home games dating back to April 18th, continuing the longest active home win streak in the league. Sunday's game was a sellout with the crowd of 16,458 filling out State Farm Arena. Amazing to see. And really the crowds all around the NBA for the most part have been extremely passionate. It's been great to see these fans back in arenas, but then there's been those few fans who have ruined it for everyone. Trey Young's been the best player in this series by a mile. The man just became the second player in NBA history to lead his team in points and assists in each of his first four career playoff games. Ice Trey's ability to pull back and stop on a dime from over 30 feet, mixed with his backcourt partner's marksmanship in Bogdan, don't call him Boyan Bogdanovich, has this tandem looking like the Splash Brothers of the Eastern Conference. Bogey's been lighting it up from distance all year, as he ranked 11th in three-point percentage in the 2020-21 season, and that's carried into the postseason. Through four games, he's shooting 45% from three-point range. On Sunday afternoon, on one shot from Bogdanovich, another from Danilo Gallinari, and another from Kevin Herter, the Electric Hawks attack posted nine points in exactly one minute. Gallo can post up and fade away, he can space the floor after setting a screen, and Herter's another elite shooter. Now you may be thinking, I know Atlanta's got a ton of shooters, but where's the defense? And while this team did rank number 18 in points allowed during the regular season, since Nate McMillan took over for Lloyd Pierce, who was fired at the beginning of March, Atlanta was tied with the championship-bound Milwaukee Bucks in defensive rating. McMillan's done an incredible job with this young team, and through four playoff games, other than those Bucks who are far ahead of the pack in defensive rating, Atlanta ranks as the best team in that area. That's in large part due to Clint Capella, who's averaging 2.3 blocks per game in this series against the Knicks. He's an elite piece to have on the back end of your defense, as he ranked right behind Rudy Gobert and Nerlens Noel, in blocked shots per game. Then you've got a wing defender like DeAndre Hunter, whose sophomore campaign saw him take a very solid step in the right direction. Compared to his rookie year, 
He upped his efficiency from the field by 7%. He did miss 49 games with a knee injury this year, and the Kawhi Leonard potential could be out of his grasp. But when it comes to being an all-NBA defender and a top 3 and D player in basketball, those are reasonable goals for the 23-year-old. But DeAndre's already damn good, as he's been the Hawks' third leading scorer in these playoffs, and his 7'2 wingspan combined with his awareness and hustle has been crucial to shutting down the dangerous combination of Barrett and Randall. Not only does Hunter have those aforementioned qualities on defense, but the strength this guy has for his age is incredible. For the majority of 3 and D prospects, it'll take years for them to develop adequate muscle in order to compete with the best wings basketball has to offer, whereas DeAndre Hunter is already filled out. The second year player already weighs in at 225 pounds, and while he's extremely mobile for his size, you can tell the weight he has on him is all muscle. So with his body type and awareness, the sky's the limit. Hunter still needs to tighten his handle, also he needs to stay consistent with his shot creation and deep range shot, so I'll be keeping an eye on his progression. Somehow I've gone this entire video without mentioning one of the Hawks' most valuable players in John Collins. John Collins has already developed a reputation as one of the better power forwards in the NBA, as he was the team's second leading scorer throughout this season, and he's had multiple years of averaging 20 points and 10 boards. In the playoffs, John ranks fifth on the team in minutes per game, and is only averaging 12 points per game. But considering the Hawks have dominated without one of their best players performing up to his potential, that just goes to show how deep this Atlanta team is. But now for what you stuck around for, and that's whether or not the Hawks can make a deep run in these 2021 playoffs. Keep in mind that if they finish off the Knicks, which it's looking like they will, they'll avoid both the Nets and the Bucks in the second round to instead take on an unpredictable Philadelphia 76ers team. Playing the first seed in the East, don't get me wrong, that's going to be a tough challenge, and Clint Capella will certainly have his hands full trying to hold down the bona fide MVP candidate that is Joel Embiid. But the reason why they'll have a very good chance against the Sixers is the electric Golden State Warriors-esque pace that they play at. I said it earlier about their backcourt relating to the Splash Brothers, but if you think about how they compare to the 2015 championship winning Warriors, it's pretty similar in terms of their rosters. Trey's your Curry, Bogdanovich is your Thompson, Hunter's your Harrison Barnes, and the shooting of Collins combined with the defense of Capella is your Draymond Green. The most important reason for why ATL's basketball team should be taken seriously is that they've got a potentially generational superstar in Trey Young at the head of the snake. It's clear that Trey was tired of hearing about how he's just some foul-drawing flopper, and he's won over a ton of fans in this incredibly heated series against the Knicks. Luka's playoff debut last year may have been the best all-time on paper, but Trey's playoff debut this year has been just as dramatic not to mention he's winning games. To be fair, he is in the Eastern Conference and the team surrounding him is much better than Luka's, but the point is, Ice Trey deserves just as much respect as the Slovenian sensation. Stay updated on every new video by following the channel on Instagram at Hoops. Appreciate you for sticking around. Last video, I talked about how the Lakers were rounding into form doesn't look that way now, but go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Links in the description. Have a great day, y'all, and I'll see you next video.